the Davis Mountains in far west Texas, an area of open ranch land and clear, beautiful skies. Each evening when the sun sets over this rugged country, something rare and extraordinary takes place. High atop this mountain, a window to the universe looks into the night sky. This is the University of Texas McDonald Observatory. On any clear night, away from the lights of the city, you can see about 2,000 stars with your unaided eye. With a telescope, you can look trillions of miles into space and peer thousands of years into the past, perhaps discovering things yet unknown. It is these unknowns which are examined here. The University of Texas McDonald Observatory is ranked among the top 10 observatories in the world. Because of its location in the heart of the Davis Mountains, astronomers have some of the darkest and clearest night skies available in the United States. The history of the observatory starts in 1926 when W.J. McDonald, an insightful East Texas banker, left most of his estate to the University of Texas. He asked that his fortune be used to establish an observatory, an unusual request in those days. Today, there are four telescopes on the mountain, giving astronomers a first-class ticket to the heavens. This is the 82-inch Struve reflector, and although being one of the world's largest telescopes, many people believe this to be one of the most beautiful as well. Mark Wetzel works at the observatory, his is a difficult job, explaining to visitors what the complex telescopes do. This is a reflecting telescope, which means that the light does not pass through a lens way up at the top of the telescope. Instead, the light strikes a primary mirror that's 82 inches in diameter and has a perfect curve to it so that that light that strikes can gather to a single point we call the focus. Moving the telescope, however, is quite a different challenge. The astronomers, many years ago, had to rely on these wheels. Today, however, we use a different method for moving the telescope, and that method utilizes this control panel and these LED readouts. And you can always tell by the telltale rumbling that the telescope is turning. There are two basic types of telescopes, refractors and reflectors. A refracting telescope uses a lens to gather the light and form an image. The lens is mounted at the front and an eyepiece at the opposite end magnifies the image. In a reflecting telescope, a mirror is used to produce the images. The mirror is mounted at the back and reflects incoming light to form an image near the front. All the telescopes at the McDonald Observatory are the reflector type. This is one of our most proud additions to the observatory. This is a 107-inch telescope made possible largely by NASA and the National Science Foundation. The 107-inch made some of the initial observations of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune before we sent the spacecraft to those places in later years. And as you can see, this is an enormous telescope and utilizes a single 107 inch in diameter mirror, much larger even than the 82, but yet operates in very similar fashions. The telescope weighs approximately 165 tons, and that's pretty tricky to move around. So we must balance the telescope, as in the 82 inch, and move the telescope on two axes, one for east and west and one for north and south. And that's possible from the control panel here. And you can also see the red LED readouts that show us precisely where the telescope is pointed.
And Dr. William Cochran is a research scientist with the McDonald Observatory. Like most astronomers, he does not live here, but comes to the observatory a few weeks out of the year to conduct his research on the stars. The telescope serves one purpose for an astronomer, to gather light. It is this light that scientists like Dr. Cochran study. Astronomers don't spend the night looking through the telescope with their eye. Instead, we have some very advanced instruments which record the light for us. We spend the night here in the control room where we have our computer that runs the instruments and records the data for us. Here, we're looking at the spectrum of one of our stars, and it's displayed so that we have the spectrograph breaks out the light into its different colors. We th then write all these images that we have our instrument take onto magnetic tape. We take that uh, back to Austin with us, and we spend the next couple of months analyzing and investigating what this really tells us about the stars. Because of technological advances, we now look deeper into space and gather more information than ever before. The McDonald Observatory is staying on the cutting edge with the building of the new Hobby Eberly Telescope. When dedicated, the telescope will be the second largest in the world and will allow astronomers to analyze the chemical makeup, distances, and velocities of objects in space, many of which we can barely see today. Because the telescope has doors that open, and the doors open up like elevator doors, and they're only on one half of the dome. This half over here... Despite its technical and scientific wonders, the observatory is more than a place where scientists work and study. It is also a place for the public to learn. Okay, those are the dome doors. They open up like elevators, and you can see that they... The observatory is here not just for scientists. It's for the public. It's for our society. Science was invented by a society to understand what we're a part of and to understand what we're capable of as well in that society. It teaches us something. It is only a tool that we use to understand something basic in nature about ourselves and about our home. This one is still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so. And the detached yeah. prominence is also there up above that. Yes, I see it now. Mm -hmm. The study of stars has always had practical applications, including calendar making, timekeeping, and navigation. But the main job of astronomy is simply the advancement of knowledge. Ever since ancient times, when man could first look at the sky, people wondered about the sun, the planets, the stars. And of course, in today's world, we still wonder about these things. A lot of times, I'll walk outside at night, and I'll look up at the sky, and I'll realize that I'm actually very privileged to be doing something that is, is different and is sort of rare and extremely interesting. And, um, you know, I, I'm just very lucky to be able to do this for a living. Each morning, as the sun rises, another evening of work ends at the McDonald Observatory. This high-tech bastion in the middle of open ranch land has one intent and purpose, to help us learn more of the universe, to see it face to face, to learn its secrets, and make them our own. <laughs>